right, I am gonna pour a couple of bases today. I've got my colors already mixed. I have my vase already prepped. And all I'm going to do is mix it in a cup that's already dried so the pink is not going to get on it. And we're just going to go for it. Just put in my KY, a little bit of white. Put in some of my... This is called um, Bimini Blue. I'll get you a full list of colors in a little bit. I didn't think to have them prepped. Go back in with a little bit more white. This is going to be for my mom to go with some paintings that her and I did together. This is going to be a complimentary vase to go with all those. Just spilled paint everywhere. So there's our pour cup. I'm going to use the blue stick here and just give it one turn. like now. And I think it's just way too boring turquoise. So I am going to put another pour on top of it and add some of this. Not happy with it. A little bit too much turquoise and not enough diversity. So we're going to add some more blue and some more green. Believe it or not, I'm actually going to try it again. I've got my pots, which I've already gessoed on the inside, so I'm leaving that alone. The outside have been cleaned with alcohol. They've dried. I've got a whole new batch of paint here set up, ready to go. And we're gonna see what happens this time. Let's hit it.
total disaster. Uh, about 15 minutes after the last segment you just saw, the paint just peeled right off. I tried to pour just plain paint into the inside of the vase and let it dry. And it just peeled right off. The outside paint started peeling right off. I just could not get the paint to stick to the vase. And in a fit of anger, I nearly threw it across the room, but I held myself back. Peeled off all the paint, saved the paint, could use it for skins for something else, and I washed the vases to start over again. And my thought is, let me gesso the inside of the vase and then once the inside is gessoed, I can paint it a solid color, like a dark blue, which I think would be very dramatic. And then try the pouring again over the outside, maybe even gessoing the outside. I, I've seen people do this before. Nobody talked about gessoing the vases, so I didn't feel the need to do it. But that was a couple days ago. These are the two vases that you just witnessed me pouring on and wasting tons and tons of paint. They're matching vases. And I have gessoed the inside of them this time. I don't know if gessoing is necessary or not. I don't know if I need to gesso the outside or not. I've cleaned them, I've wiped them down with alcohol. Maybe it's just this particular type of vase. I have no clue, but these are just not working. And as beautiful as the vases were at one point, by the end they were looking awful. But at one point they were looking pretty good. You saw that my biggest flaw is I just keep pushing it. I'm putting more and more, and I'm never satisfied. Oh, I have to try one more thing. Let me tweak it. Let me figure it out. People, let me just tell you, pour and leave it the heck alone. <laughs> so, I'm going to try it again. But in the interim, I wanted you to see that this was one of the ones that I did a practice on before I did the two matching ones for my mom. So I just sewed this one, and then I poured pink inside of it, twirled it around, twirled it around, then put it upside down on a surface where it could drip, and it just looks awful. You can see that the paint is pulling the gesso out it's crimping, it's crinkling, it just looks terrible. And this was my test vase before I tackled the matching cylinder ones, cylindrical ones. So, I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet, but I want to keep you informed that I'm, I'm trying. Stay tuned. <laughs> Look at it now. Ugh, oh, such an improvement. It was so bland and boring with just light turquoise and I had way too much white in there. And now it's got so much more character. Yeah. Especially right there. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, we're gonna try it again. And what I'm using is the vase that I just showed you that it's already been gessoed inside and painted and I don't know if it's worth saving, but it's gonna be my base. And I'm gonna take the other big cylindrical vase that we did earlier and put that on top, just so it has a place to drip and there's plenty of room underneath. So, I think what I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm gonna do a little bit of the pour around here because I find that when I do the pour over the top, it drips down and never seems to fill this bottom area. And then I end up pouring more and more and more just trying to get the bottom area. So let's try doing that. Take this pour cup that I've already pre-mixed and just make one swirl. And let's see what happens if we just try this.
determined to get this vase poured, even though it seems to take a considerable amount of paint, and I don't seem to find the right solution. At least not yet. Maybe it's here. Tell you what I'm seeing so far is absolutely gorgeous. So let's see if my idea pans out. Big vase down there. This one over the top. It's all dripping off, which is fine. My main purpose was to cover the bottom first, which I have successfully done. So now let's try some dripping over the edge and see what happens. Isn't that an improvement? Let's turn it and see what's going on over on the other side. Because we do have some paint pooling at the top there. So let's shove some of it over here. Oh! Beautiful. Loving it. Glad you are here. All right, we got a little bit more, and then we are going to leave it alone. Stop. 